Thank goodness. So, um, welcome to the Mr. Beacon podcast. We are at IoT World in Santa Clara, right on the edge of the Bay Area. Um, uh, but I'm actually with some French people. Um, and Eric, maybe you can introduce yourself. Maybe you can both introduce yourself. Why don't uh, nice to meet you, everyone. My name is Cassandra Lecor, and I'm Business Developer Manager for the company Yola. Fantastic. And Eric? My name is uh, Eric Carrier. I'm the uh, CEO and co-founder of uh, You Will Love. Okay, so it is very uh, busy here. There's a lot of fun stuff going on, but the sound is terrible. So you and I are going to go for a walk somewhere quieter. Everyone can see the uh, get a, a sense of the buzz. There's, there's a line. We were talking. There's a line out the door to get into this place. Uh, there's a lot of interest in IoT. What you guys are doing is fascinating. Very, very low-cost tags that enable uh, real-time location systems in all sorts of environments, industrial, retail. So let's go and talk about that. But let's okay. go for a walk first. Okay. All right. So, yeah, we're in the um, startup city at the moment, aren't we? Yes, uh, we are. Yeah. And so tell us where your company is based. We are based in the south of France, um, in Toulouse, and uh, we are part of an incubator created by Airbus. Uh, a couple of years ago, we joined that incubator. We were selected amongst 150 companies from around the world. Uh, we were the only French actually company uh, being selected together with a German, uh, Hong Kong, and a Spanish company. Fantastic. And what did you do before you started UNLOCK? My background is um, in development of companies. Uh, I've worked uh, in uh, three different countries. I've uh, been away traveling for about 15 years uh, in China, in uh, uh, the UK and Switzerland, creating and developing companies. And my original background is a scientific background. Okay, very cool. And how big are you in Locke uh, today? Today we've got uh, 26 people working full-time on the project. Uh, we've got uh, 15 customers signed in four different countries where we are deploying the solution. Fantastic. And uh, ah, this is getting quieter. This is good. It's not nearly as interesting in the background, but they may actually be able to hear us. So that'll be, yeah, that'll be really cool. So let's, uh, why don't we uh, grab this. Do you mind if we uh, grab here? We're uh, recording a 360 degree video, so just to... Let you know. <laughs> um, all right. So maybe now's a good time just to summarize what Uinlock does. Well, it's very simple. Um, Uinlock has developed, invented, and developed the first solution enabling industrial players and logistics companies to track and locate millions of goods simultaneously in harsh environments. Harsh environments means um, usually lots of metal. Uh, production centers with tools, with spare parts are filled with metal. Uh, retail is filled with uh, metal shelves uh, and warehouses too. So uh, most of the existing technologies uh, have got two or three main problems to be able to be deployed uh, in, a, in a mass market. The, the, the restrictions are the cost, uh, the bulkiness, uh, the form factor, and the reliability in metallic environments. So that's basically the three key differentiators of our solution. It's a very small form factor, six square centimeters, three millimeters thick. It's half the size of a business card. Okay, so this that's, is it. This is uh, exactly. the, or at least part of the solution. These are the tags that go on assets that you exactly. want to track. And you stick it on a, on a parcel, on the tool. Uh, there is no battery. Uh, and the tag is going to emit using energy harvesting, radio signal energy harvesting. Um, uh, and that will be detected by beacons located around the building, uh, which will send this data back to a server, which will reconstruct the 3D position uh, of the tag. So you can have a continuous inventory of uh, thousands and millions of products simultaneously, visualize these products uh, in specific zones in your warehouse. Uh, you can uh, look at historical data of positioning, so you can uh, see where your glitch or your bottlenecks are in the production line, uh, you can optimize your uh, storage space uh, by analyzing, by mixing uh, your sales data with your location data, uh, and hence putting the high frequency uh, rotation stock uh, close to the entry uh, and the uh, low rotation stock uh, closer to the end of the warehouse. So all this clever stuff is only possible if you can track and locate millions of products. 
So this is fascinating. So you've got a beacon without a battery. It's basically harvesting the energy out of the radio spectrum that's around. And so you can really reduce the cost because you don't have to... And all those objections about how long is the battery life, the battery life is forever, basically, as long as there's RF in the... Yeah, the, the main air. cost of active systems is actually linked to the battery. Uh, the, the battery, even if it's a button, uh, it's going to be costly. You've got a PCB, you've got electronics to manage that power, uh, so all the power management side. And then you have uh, also uh, restrictions in industrial environments because you might have high temperatures, you will have power, uh, battery leakage problems, you will have battery replacement problems. And even if it's a, a couple of years uh, life expectancy in terms of uh, battery powered system, you still have a lot of maintenance to do. And you, when you have hundreds of thousands or millions of products uh, being tagged, it's, uh, it's uh, not feasible actually to maintain these tags. So, um, uh, tell us how much the tags cost. The, you've got several versions of the tags. You will, the first tags being launched and available this year in volume uh, from middle of the summer uh, are industrial grade tags. You can handle them with greasy hand, detergents, uh, you can stick them on metal parts, and these are a few euro tags. You will have from so a few euros. So we're talking what, a couple of dollars, or um, yeah, something it like? depends very much on the volume you're getting. Right. If you're buying 10 million tags, it's not the same price as if you're buying two. Okay. okay. So I think in industrial environments, you can say you're going to be buying thousands of tags. So at that kind of level. Yeah. In yeah. general, most of the use cases we see are in the range of 50,000 to two, three million tags. Okay. Okay. Uh, because customers want to tag tools, but also spare parts. Uh, they want to automate a number of things in their manufacturing sites. Um, then you have the paper version of the tag coming out next year, which is close to what uh, an RFID paper tag look. Uh, very cheap, uh, but with uh, some restrictions. You will not be able to stick it on metal parts, and, and it's more fragile, but mm -hmm. perfectly adapted, suitable for um, cardboard, um, cardboard boxes. So that's that's great because I can imagine this going on pallets, uh, and I can imagine these paper tags going actually in the cardboard in the products that are, are made, so you can track the product. Yeah, the advantage of uh, this kind of labels or tags is that you uh, don't need to have an opening to change the battery. You can put it embedded into 3D printed materials, for example, in containers, or handle for tools, uh, or a wide range of you know, uh, at the end of the day, a wide range of applications which are actually not accessible with uh, tags which require battery. So tell us briefly, what, what is this radio technology that you're using? Because you contrasted it with RFID. So it's not an ultra-wideband RFID tag, or is it? No, it's a mixture of different uh, technologies. Uh, the main things we wanted to achieve with this uh, was to not be... Um, do not have the multipath effects that you have with uh, traditional radio technologies in metallic environments, and to be immune to parasitic effects that you can have uh, from a power generator, from a, uh, a lot of electronic equipment you have in industrial sites. So um, it's, a, it's a mix of UWB, uh, but we have coupled that with two other technologies that have been patented to create an extremely reliable communication channel between the tag and the beacon, an ultra low power consumption uh, uh, communication system. Okay, uh, so there's some ultra wide band in there. So you're using yeah. a really broad bit of spectrum. Exactly. So a little yeah. bit of interference here. You've still got all this spectrum. Exactly. Um, but um, you know, ultra wide band is traditionally the beacons are very expensive. I'm assuming that is, is this your chip technology? So you're actually fabricating it, or the chip technology is ours. The design is being done by a partner with. Uh, we've designed the, uh, the core blocks, the core IP is ours. Uh, the manufacturing of the chip or the beacons uh, is made by top of the class uh, EMS, electronic manufacturing service companies, uh, and uh, uh, leading class in Asia, um, IC manufacturers. Okay, so you mentioned beacon. So that's a tag, and then there's this beacon thing, potentially. Tell us, uh, and traditionally, the, you know, the challenge with energy harvesting is how often, how far can I transmit and how often can I transmit? So okay. tell us a little bit about what we can do with just a standalone beacon, a standalone tag, and then tell us a bit about where these beacons come in. Okay, the range of emission, so the, the tag is going to be detected by beacons in the range of 30 to 50 meters. Or in fact, less than 30 meters as well, of course, but depending on the environment, the maximum will be 30 to 50 meters. 
and, so and, the, and the receiver is not my phone because obviously my phone doesn't understand this exotic no, the radio receiver, technology. It's the receiver special. is not your phone. Okay. We're working with high frequencies to ensure a higher uh, precision uh, and higher reliability as well. Okay, so I have a proprietary receiver that you're manufacturing yeah. as well, presumably. Yeah. Um, and I need, how many of those do I need to get X, Y, Z location? Well, you need to have a uh, tag being seen by four beacons at least to be able to do 3D positioning. Okay. So if you've got a 100 meter by 100 meter, well, in feet, that would be 300 feet by 300 feet, um, the range is about 90 feet between each beacon. Okay. okay. So it's about 15 beacons uh, to cover the wall. It's, it's going to be a mesh type, a matrix type approach to okay. cover the zone. Um, and hence, the uh, the tag will be uh, uh, positioned in X, Y, Z uh, with 30 centimeters range precision. Okay. And these beacons are receivers, but they're also transmitting energy as well. Is that right? Yeah. One of the trick of the solution is to uh, not have a bidirectional channel in the tag. So the tag is actually quite dumb. It doesn't listen to the network, uh, which means that it consumes a lot less. Uh, in fact, as a comparison, we consume about three to 400 times less than any active systems we have seen. Okay. Um, and uh, hence, energy harvesting wouldn't be feasible, actually, on existing solutions today. Um, so... Sorry, I lost the question. No, no, that's good. So, so I'm not. So, so the tag is just broadcasting. It's not receiving. So you're yeah, saving so energy yeah. that way. And and so basically, it's locked in, and it's it's broadcasting a unique number. Um, yeah, it's and a unique it's identifier. It. Exactly. Uh, written in the hardware, so mm -hmm. it's not uh, uh, hackable. You cannot uh, modify it. Yeah. Uh, there is no software on the tag. Uh, the refresh rate is going to depend on the level of energy the tag is going to receive. Uh, so in a normal environment, it can be uh, tens of minutes, uh, but you can adjust that uh, by uh, using a, uh, one of the functions of the beacons. The beacon receive the signals of the tag, but they can also remotely power the tags if required in specific zones to, uh, to adjust the frequency uh, uh, of, the, uh, of the emissions. So just recap the, 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 the kind of maximum frequency that you think you can... Oh, w when we have, um, we, we have uh, our solution, for example, enable you to uh, monitor all the in and outs of the building. So mm -hmm. to do that, we put beacons uh, above the entrance. Uh, it creates kind of a radio curtain. And once the product goes underneath it, it emits two or three times each uh, through its, uh, each uh, passage. Okay. So uh, it can be instantaneous, uh, less than a second for an emission uh, between two emissions. Uh, it, it, it very much depends on the, on the level of uh, radio signal you get. So if you don't have enough beacons, you can be broadcasting a couple of times a second, which is enough to kind of put a geofence in place. And, yes, uh, we, we do basically all the geofencing applications uh, can be done with our solution and in a much more actually cost-efficient way because uh, the limitations of some of the RFID technologies is the range. If you have got an opening in the industry with uh, uh, cars or planes passing underneath, the, the openings are usually very large. Uh, and because of the range with RFID limited to a few meters, you cannot actually put a, a portal around the, uh, the zone. So right. um, not only it covers the uh, geofencing that you would find in RFID, but also covers use cases that you wouldn't be able to cover. So can you clarify, what are the boundaries of what you're going to be developing and where are you going to be working with partners to create the, the solution stack, the software? Like, do you have uh, mapping and uh, uh, so forth? Okay, on the software platform, uh, it's a cloud-based uh, SaaS uh, solution, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to uh, uh, include a database, uh, algorithm to reconstruct the positions, uh, supervision bricks, which enable you to supervise the network uh, and how functional the beacons are, for example. You've got a visualization brick and an inter interrogation brick. So you can query and visualize very simply the products you have tagged in your production centers. Now, this is a very open platform. So uh, we've, we've seen uh, already two editors, software uh, editors, who are developing for us uh, specific verticals to uh, manage your tools in a, in a manufacturing center, right. optimize your space for warehousing. So uh, the, uh, the platform is also, um, it has got built in a number of APIs enabling you to take the data 
and put it into any ERP. It can be an SAP or an IBM Bluemix type uh, ERP. So it depends very much on the use case of the customer, whether they want to bring that data into a, a more cloud-based IoT type platform or whether they, whether they want to use it locally um, as a standalone uh, solution. All right. And, um, but our core business is not to develop software uh, uh, specific application. Uh, our core value is to invent and commercial, commercialize breakthrough uh, traceability and localization solutions. So can you talk about any partners that you have you're, you've started working with, yeah. either on the software side or the integration side? Because this is a lot of this is going to be about integration, isn't it? We have got already uh, one integrator. Well, in fact, we've got about 40 actually we are dealing with, mm -hmm. uh, but really deployed and, and uh, commercial uh, staff together with an integrator. We've got uh, a partnership with Sopra in Europe, uh, which is a, a leading IT integrator uh, present in uh, active in, in, a, in a wide range of countries around the world. Um, and they, uh, for the use cases we have uh, been working on, they are um, uh, developing new, uh, specific application uh, to exploit the data uh, and create additional value for the end customer. And uh, what geographies are you focused on? So far, most of the deployments have been in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, the next, and we will have an office in Germany in the second half of this year, and complement uh, in addition to the one we have in France. And we are planning to open offices in the US. In fact, I've been meeting a number of potential integrators and customers over the, the last few days, and I'm mm -hmm. meeting a, a few more over the next coming days in, in San Francisco Bay, but also in Atlanta uh, region. Uh, and in Asia, we've got already identified uh, two partners, uh, and some investors are also are coming on board. And let's just talk about timing, where you are. Is the product in alpha, beta? When do you? When are you going to be shipping production? Code? We are shipping our production from September onwards. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, chips and the beacons are coming out of the manufacturing sites in June, um, while the production is launched. And we will have millions of tags available at the end of this year, early next year. So the first batches are about a few hundred thousands, and the uh, millions will be available from January onwards. So the possibilities are almost limitless, but where are you seeing the most interest? What are the use cases that you think are the sweet spot? The most use cases we have followed through are in the industry and the logistics. We want to keep a very clear focus over the next couple of years. We see a lot of demand from hospitals, from a lot of other markets like the retail industry and so on. Um, and uh, we'll go there quickly with integrators. Uh, with uh, partners who have got specific skills and know-how in this particular market. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, um, the, uh, the adop possible adoption of this technology is very wide, in fact, in terms of market sectors. We've, we've signed already a number of uh, contracts as well with people in the uh, petrol industry or in various industries, in fact, uh, uh, where it is very costly to lose products, lose tools, lose spare parts, uh, and or do uh, man-made inventories. Wonderful. So, um, Eric, that's uh, fascinating stuff. I am really excited by what you're doing. I think it's really a, a mark of what's coming in the future, the batteryless uh, tag. Um, so, um, thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much. If I can just add one thing. Mm -hmm. um, we are closing a round of investment right now. We have secured about three-fourths of the round. Uh, we've got investors from the uh, European market and from Asia, uh, but one of the reasons I'm here is uh, we would be keen to have a, 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 an investor from the US. Uh, the, the remaining ticket is actually quite small, it's about 500,000, but that would be, the idea is to have an associate with a, a real partnership helping us to open that market. Um, and the other reason we're here is we are interested in the potential licenses. One thing I didn't mention is to accelerate the market adoption uh, we are discussing with a number of RFID manufacturers or IoT manufacturers to ensure that they can produce quickly uh, UWIN not based solutions. Very good. Well, I, th I think you're going to have no shortage of people that want to invest, and uh, sounds like you're one of